that the Lord has already, already been talking to us here tonight, letting us know that He does care, amen. that He's here to help us, and He's here, amen, to use us. Amen. Well, as the bill you were mentioning, and this may be a little different. You ever heard people say, I wish God would do something. I wish God would do something. Where is God? You know, where is God when things happen in Florida? Where is God? Why isn't he doing something? I want you to turn your Bibles to the book of John, chapter 20, verse number 21 tonight. Amen. Oh, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. A lot of people, they don't realize but God's still working. <laughs> you said the Lord inhabits the praises Amen. of His people. Right. Oh, praise God. The Lord is here. Amen. Aren't you glad you're a part of the body of Christ? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen to these words in John chapter 20, verse 21. This is after He resurrected. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. Amen. As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. There's a story that is told, probably it's not really true, though you can probably see some of the truths of it, that after Jesus resurrected and he ascended into heaven, uh, he went all the way there and, and the angels met him. And they said, Lord, uh, uh, who's going to tell you this message of what you did on the cross for them and let the world know about this? Uh, who is going to let people know we're willing to go? And the Lord said, you don't need to go. I've already chosen 12. And then I got 120 in the upper room and, and there's others. That's the ones that I'm going to send with my message all around the world. Praise God. And the angels were silent. And they said, uh, do you have a backup plan? You ever know, men down through the ages have sure better way of messing things up. Sure. And the Lord said, I have no backup. It's either us or nobody. Amen. Amen. Is, I wish the Lord would do something. Amen. We are the body of the head. Father God, I thank you for your word. Oh God, I pray today. And I, I thank you for what you've already done in this service. And Amen. How the anointing, the Spirit of God, things that you've already confirmed to me in this message. Lord, I pray that you use this church and every church represented, use me and my church. Oh God, that we in this last hour, Amen. as we've heard that you were in the last time, would you our part to touch a world that's without God. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> Amen. Peace be unto you, Jesus said to his disciples. And uh, he, he, he said, as the Father has sent me. Put my hand on this here. So. The Father sent Jesus. God the Father sent Jesus. And you think of all the things that he raised the dead. He healed the sick. He uh, fed the 5,000. And all of these wonderful things. And then he died. But the cross is the answer. Amen. Yeah. And the empty tomb is the answer. Yeah. He ascended into heaven. All oh, brothers and sisters, he ascended into heaven and he left this responsible love. He said, even so sin. If you are born again tonight, the Lord has sent you into this world to preach the gospel. Yeah. He has sent you into the world to let people know that Jesus is their only hope. 
He is the one. You see, what the answer is is not more programs. The answer is not more government. But the answer is changed hearts by the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. And the answer comes from the people of God preaching the message. Amen. And so why does God do something? First of all, I want to read some of Hebrews 10, 12. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God forever. Mm -hmm. Amen. He sat down. Why did he sit down? What did he do? Why did he sit down, Brother Samuel, when you come home from work? The work is done. Right. The job is done. Jesus sat down because the job was finished. Amen. He said on the cross, it is finished. Amen. Praise God. Amen. See, most of the world just doesn't know that. Right. And so often the church doesn't know it. Come on, Amen. Come on. Look at the dust on the Bibles. <laughs> Amen. Wait, wait. Hey, I hope to get I, I want to cover a lot of ground here. I <laughs> It's the way I'm brother Seville, but I hope I can help you all tonight. Here. Amen. But he sat down, the work was finished. It was he was done. Basically, the only thing that we see him do is found in Romans chapter 8, where it says that he intercedes for the saints. Yeah. He prays. He intercedes for us. Now we need to understand something. Jesus, the Father, sent the Son, the Son came and died on the cross. He said, but he said, he said, I want you to know something, that when I go back to heaven, I am going to send the Comforter Praise yeah. God. into the world. But we need to understand this about the Comforter. He works through us. Yeah. That's right. Now, there may be a lot of different things and ways that God works, but I, I want us to see this. See, we have been sent, and we have to ask ourselves, are we going? Am I going? Am I being used of God to use this message? And so, let's first of all, let's look at our responsibility. And, and, and of course, we're going to get it this way first because a lot of people get this. Hopefully they do because if you don't get this responsibility, uh, you'll never do one of some of these other things. But in Ezekiel 3.18, it says, When I say unto the wicked, I wonder if anybody ever preached the gospel to that young man that shot those 17 people. I wonder if he ever heard the gospel. The devil was sure working. Sure. Hallelujah. But he said, when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die. Did you know that your loved ones that are lost are going to die? Did you know that your neighbors that are lost are going to die? Did you know that those that you work with that are lost are going to die? And God, this is what God said. Everybody that's not saying, he calls them wicked. And thou givest him not warning. Who is to give him warning? I wish the angels would do this job. We just found out the angels are going to do it. You, we have to warn them. Yes. Brother Seville is on his way over the bridge that's out. He doesn't know about it. But I don't like Brother Seville, so I'm just going to watch him go. <laughs> Come on now. Uh, I don't know why you didn't know that. <laughs> well, that's what we do a lot of times, don't we? Sure. We don't warn them. Sure. We don't warn them. How to look. He said, if thou givest him not warning, now this is scary nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way, to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. See, you're not warned, you're still going to fall off the bridge. Right. Nobody told me he's still going to fall off the bridge. The loss is not warned, he'll die in his iniquity. But now here's the scary part for you and I. But his blood will I require at thy hand. That's right. I... And I, I, I remember when I was in high school as a young man, a school that committed suicide. I was riding on a bus after I heard about that for about an hour or so. And all I could hear was him crying to me from hell. Diz, why didn't you tell me more? I thought, dear Jesus, help me not to miss that again. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Oh, no. yes. Hallelujah. Oh, he said, he said, if you don't warn the wicked, their blood is on you. You, you see, no, no. You, you know, brothers and sisters, you know, we, we need to understand. You know, it's going to be hard to completely. But, you know, we need to invite people to church. You need to witness to people. You need to invite them to church. And, and pray that when they come, they get under conviction. Yep. Amen. Right. 
Oh, I don't want my loved ones to get convicted. They won't come back. Maybe they won't. But I tell you what, they'll know where God was dealing with them. Yep. Now, you can understand this. You see, you ever, ever been to church service? Get ready to close, and there's a message in tongues, and there's an interpretation, and the Holy Ghost is dealing with sinners. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. There have been a few times you thought, you know, I, you know I'm not wanting to hinder everybody from their Sunday dinner. <laughs> Amen. And so I think we'll shut the service up, brother. Amen. And there's another message in tongues and another interpretation along the same lines. Well, let's just ignore that. You better not. Right. Mm -hmm. God's still dealing. Yep. You go on, they still sit there, they don't raise their hand, they don't come to the front. I mean, there are times I've had two altar call people to come and pray, probably the ones that were supposed to pray still did. And when you get ready to close in service in the third message in tongues. I'm going to tell you something. I mean, it doesn't matter if it takes till 2 o'clock. If that person gets saved, amen, they'll thank you and the church for all of eternity. Mm -hmm. uh, if they don't, if they don't, they will know that there was a God that loved them. Right. And there was the body of Christ that loved them and was trying to help get saved, and they had their opportunity. Yep. Oh, but I'm going to tell you something. You see, oh, is the church too afraid of the Holy Ghost? Right. Did you know that tongues are a sign to the unbeliever? Amen. Did you know that even prophecy that says, well, come and put the very dead, bring out a person's heart? Mm -hmm. Come on now. Oh, praise God. So the word, the altar call, uh, I, I belong, oh, well, I better be careful. I just want to be careful. I just won't go too far here. <laughs> but there are churches, they don't even have altar calls anymore. Mm -hmm. They don't even bring people to the altar anymore. There, you know, I mean, probably there's a message in tongues that probably scare them. I'm talking about Pentecostal churches. Oh, so, God, help us today. You see, how do you, what do you do when you don't come and pray and see God? But listen, brothers and sisters, you see, us preachers need to warn the lost. We need to warn, he says, even in that same chapter, to warn the righteous. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Exodus, Ezekiel 22, 30. And I sought for a man among them. That should make up the hedge and stand in the gap for me for the land that I should not destroy it. Right. God says, I don't want to destroy Lincoln's. Sure. God says, I don't want to destroy Brayton Cayman. I don't want to destroy Lewis Berry. I'm looking for men. I'm looking. Thank God for everyone that did, but I'm looking for people mm -hmm. that want to stand in the gap. But here's what he said about this place I found none. I don't want there to be the place. You see, there are churches. But you see, like I said, a lot of them have altar calls. They're afraid to preach the truth. They're afraid for the Holy Ghost to move. I'm here to tell you, brothers and sisters, what does God say? Don't ever allow your church to get the place where God says there's a church, there's pews, there's a carpet, there's doors, but I don't find anyone there reaching out for the Lord. Yep. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Oh, I want God to help us. Amen. Now, now what happens a lot of times, we begin to feel this burden. We begin to feel the burden of wanting to win the lost and, and, and wanting to, to help. And I just mentioned some different things, but, but, but there are times, have you ever tried and yet you felt like what you were doing, your heart was in the right place, but you were trying to win them in the flesh? Or <laughs> yeah. you felt like you weren't the way you should be. In fact, we tell you God, sometimes he puts the burden there, and then he lets us fall flat on our face because it's the next step. Mm -hmm. Now, you see this in the Old Testament. Abraham was called of God and went to the promised land. But here, here you have a couple times. Abraham, Abraham loved, wanted the will of God, but he lied. Evidently, evidently, he was trying to accomplish the will of God in the flesh. And, of course, then the issue with Hagar. And then we see Jacob got, got a grip. Uh, he wanted the blessing. He wanted the inheritance. Hey Amen. And he and Mom concocted up this great lying story to lie to Dad. Right, right. Come on now. They re he reaped that really for the rest of his life. You see, see, brothers and sisters, we have a call. We have a call, and sometimes we want to fulfill it. Hey Amen. But we then we try to do it in our own self. Mm -hmm. right. Here's Moses. He knows he's called. And I don't like what that Egyptian's doing to my brother, so I'm going to kill him. Guess what? You're going to have to wait another 40 years. Right. right. Oh. Uh, 
Amen. Wait till you're ready. Right. Amen. Wait till you're ready. And so, and then when you eat, we're the New Testament. Peter meant well. I'll never deny you. I'll never deny you. Amen. Jesus asked him to go to prayer with you, Brother Andrews. Yeah. <laughs> and he fell asleep. Yeah. He said, watch and pray lest you enter the temptation. <laughs> I don't need prayer really. I'm more dedicated than the rest of them. Watch out. Uh, uh, <coughs> he is flying in the flesh. You see, well, I, mean, I, did, I don't know if it's just in case I forget this. Let me tell you something. One of the things that the church is sadly lacking today is the prayer meeting. Mm -hmm. We go back to the prayer meeting. Amen. Prayer meetings. Seeking God for God's help. Which just leads to my next step. You see, so we want God to do something. God says, well, we don't want to do things. Prayer, it does, it comes through praise. It comes through a lot of things. Brother, the Holy Ghost already said it. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. And I answered and spake, and he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord of Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Oh, Amen. Oh, yeah. oh, ah, if we are going, if we are going to win this world, if we are going to win this world, it's not by your might, Moses. It's not by your might, Peter. Oh, it's not by your might, Abraham, and Jacob, and Rebecca. Amen. It's by my spirit. It's by my spirit, saith the Lord. Amen. Go on down to, and you can just read the rest of this chapter, verse 14. It says this. It says, Then said he, These are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. These two anointed ones probably represent the two witnesses in Revelation. But they have a direct connection to the olive tree, and here, here comes that 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 uh, aqueduct or whatever you want to call it. The oil is flowing from the tree directly into them, and the candlestick is burning brightly mm -hmm. because of the anointing. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, the light was not supposed to go out. Here's Eli. They let the light go out. Hallelujah. But here, these two men are on fire. Oh, praise God. We must. Hey, ha. Oh, I, I, it just excites me. I'm sitting here in the presence of God, and I'm thinking, Lord, you know how to confirm what you're going to do for us tonight. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, Lord. Oh, it's not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27. Listen, if you heard this already tonight, and it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall he be taken away from off thy shoulder, and his yoke from off thy neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Amen. It's not by my the yoke. You see, there are people that are so bound by the devil. They're so bound by wickedness. They're so bound. But he says it's the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. That he puts upon us. That he puts upon the church. That he puts upon his people. Hallelujah. How that he anoints our lips. That, he, that there comes a river of water out of our belly. That out of our mouth will come. Who oh, praise God. Say, I, I don't know. I can talk that way, but when the Holy Ghost comes on, you have a river of tongues, a river of interpretation, a river of prophecy, or the river of any of those other gifts. Hallelujah. It's the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And it's the anointing. It's the anointing. It's the anointing. Say, God, what my loved one needs. They don't need me just to talk to them, but Lord, that when I talk to them, that the Holy Ghost, that when they come to church, oh God, send them to church. And we pray. And everybody in the church says, Lord, we're praying that the Spirit of God, the song service, the preaching, the Sunday school, we're praying for Brother Seville. Amen. That the anointing will minister to everyone that comes. Amen. 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 See, we don't, you don't come to church and give the preacher dagger eyes. <laughs> that don't happen here. I know I saw it. One of the greatest times I saw it happen. <laughs> 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 
Some of us, I was a preacher. As I tell you, the anointing. It's the anointing. I was the anointing. I never break the yoke. Amen. You, you can You can our own natural strength. Oh, I wish. See, the times I wish God would do something. I wish I could do something. But in the Holy Ghost, in the anointing of the Spirit, God can break their yoke. Amen. He keep in the prayer meeting, keep in the altar, I mean, keep in the Word of God because it's the anointing. It's the anointing. It's the anointing. That's God's going to do to heal the sick, Amen. to save the lost. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Of course, that leads to the next place. Acts chapter 1, first part of verse 8. And ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be my witnesses. Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Judea. Praise God. Hallelujah. There have been times in my life. My last church, I was going, taking my, going to pick up my little girl at school. Hallelujah. I saw a man laying aside the slum side of the road. He man just face down, blood coming out of his mouth and fall off his truck. I got down on my knees. Oh, God, I wish there's something I could do. I said, Lord, help us send some help. He man, seconds later, the doctor came by. Oh, you see, sometimes we ourselves are so powerless. We are so weak. So, Lord, I don't have any answers. So often we're there. But I'm here to tell you something. God has the answers tonight. Yes, He does. God has the answers tonight. Praise the Lord. Sometimes we got to stay in that place of prayer until the answer comes. Mm -hmm. We got to stay in that place of seeking Amen. God until the Holy Ghost shows us from the Word about the Spirit of God what He wants to do. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus said this. Folks, but I'm going to tell you something. See, it was for the head. It's also for the body. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken heart. To preach the liberty to the captives. Recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty them that are bruised. Lord Jesus, if you did it, you want me to do it. If you Amen. did it, you want us to do it. If you did it, you want your church to do it. Hallelujah. Oh, God, use us. Oh, God, to preach this deliverance. Oh, God, to preach this deliverance so that people can be set free. I can't in myself, but the anointing of the Holy Ghost. The anointing of the Holy Ghost. Yes. The anointing of the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. I'm going to tell you what the anointing comes through my seeking of God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. John 14, 12, we run this other night, Brother Greg. I think we're going to talk about that again. Very Lord, I say unto you, no, I tell you what. Listen to the words of this verse. And we need to ask ourselves, how many people are doing this? Very Lord, I say unto you, that believe with all me. The works that I do shall he do also. Amen. And greater works than these <coughs> shall you do because I go on to my Father. Let me send it back. Amen. But we have so few that are really doing this. We need, you know, first of all, listen, we need to believe that God wants to use us. Amen. Amen. We need to believe. But you see, so, so often, so easy, it's easier to say, well, I'm not Smith Wigglesworth. Well, I'm not the Apostle Paul. I'm going to tell you what. God still wants to use the church in 2018. Amen. But can I tell you what? I told us what church of the day. Brother Greg, I'm starting with you today, so you're not going to get what you got to do. <laughs> Let's say I had a fairly good job. I was able to provide for my family, meet all my needs. And after 30 years of work, work, 30 years of work, I was able to save one million dollars. That's still a lot of money for 30 years, but it's, still, it's a lot of work, but it's still a lot of money. And I come to church here tonight, and I say, somewhere on this property is a million dollars buried, and whoever finds it can have it. 
And there's Brother Greg. He says, yeah, I don't believe that. I'm not going to go get my son. So he don't get it. And guess what, Brother Greg? You won't get it. Here's Sister Dismore. She said, well, maybe. And she go gets her shovel and she takes one shovel full of dirt and doesn't find it and says, I didn't find it. I'm giving up. Guess what? She don't get it either. There's our sister here. She goes and she takes for three hours. Maybe she's doing better. But after three hours, that's time and she quits. And this sister here, she digs all day long. Just don't find it. She gives up. Now look at this brother here. He, he digs for three days and he don't find it. He gives up. Now this brother here, he digs for a week. Finally, he quits too. His brother here, he takes for two weeks. He gives up. Sister Holly takes for three weeks and gives up. You're doing good. <laughs> she finally gives up. Now, Brother Sibylla, okay, we'll, we'll stop here. <laughs> After four weeks of digging, he finds it. Praise God. <laughs> He's got a million dollars. Whoever finds it gets it. Praise God. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. There's a lot of people misunderstand this. For all those people, there's only one person that had real faith in the brothers of God. Because faith persevered until you got Come on. Hallelujah. However, now I need brothers, I need to warn you, brothers of God. He said, you know, that's four weeks out of my life that I wasted. Well, not wasted. But he says, I worked for that. Now, just wait a minute. I worked 30 years. You worked four weeks. Now, let me tell you something about faith. Faith will cost you something. The mm -hmm. Bible says, let us labor to enter that rest. That seems a contradiction. But you see, Jesus paid it all. Mm -hmm. yeah. He worked the 30 years, if you want to call it that. And so, what you do, <laughs> even though it cost you four weeks a day, you still thank me. Sure. Come on. Sure. Now let me listen. You listen. Let me let me give you an illustration. I knew myself. I didn't tell that. I can't say the Lord, you know how. He said, I, you know, let me tell you something. I thank God for everything He's given to me. But I believe God still wants to give me more. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, but you know, sometimes we say, Lord, you know, I, I'm kind of I start, we start thinking, see, that's why all this is by faith, not by works. Your brother says, well, I fasted seven days once. The Lord says, is that right? I fasted 40 days once. <laughs> and he says, you know what else? I had a crown of thorns on my head. You didn't do that, did you? And he says, I also had 39 stripes on my back. And he also says, I had nails in my hands and my feet. Yes, it costs you four weeks. It costs you maybe to get something, a few, you know, a week of fasting or extra times of prayer. But you know when it's all said and done, you still better give him all the glory. Mm -hmm. It's still by grace. You see, I earned it by work fasting seven days compared to what Jesus did. Come on. And then I could say, well, I could say, you know, a father, I'm a, you know, a father, I, I, uh, I sure got to get some points. I sent my daughter on the mission field for a few years. I never got to see her. She went from Taiwan to Mexico. Now she's a missionary to Oklahoma. Now they can see the grandkids very much. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I can almost hear the Lord. Come on. Shut up. <laughs> he said, I sent my son to Oklahoma. I sent my son. Right. Come on now. He took all those stripes on his back. Yes, sir. And, and, and there are people that he died for, they don't even appreciate it. Right, right. And there are even some of my people that have accepted my salvation, but they're just like Peter when I ask them to pray, they're sleeping. When I ask them to go be faithful to Sunday school, can't do that. Oh, come on, everybody smile on me. <laughs> ah. And, and it's, you see, you see, come on, come on. You see, listen, brothers and sisters, you know what? Let me just tell you this, though. I'm thankful. 
that my daughter in Oklahoma and most grandkids are in the will of God. Amen. 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 You see, and listen, brothers and sisters, we've got to say, Lord, he that, see, this is what he believes. I'm telling you, he that believeth, I believe, brother, brother, man, I believe, so why am I not doing all that? See, you better be careful, you have the belief of the devils who believe in fear and trouble. <laughs> but you see, this believing is believing until you dig through, until you pray through. Amen. Until you go after that. You whatever it takes, whatever fasting and praying and seeking God. Amen. Oh, listen, brothers and sisters, you see, we must, we must, you see, the works that I do, am I willing? Are you willing? You see, see, we need to, we need to warn the lost, as he said. We need to have this anointing. But are we willing to pay the price mm -hmm. to get the anointing? Are we willing to, somebody said this. They was a brother there. I didn't want to praise him when I don't feel like it. Oh, praise God. You ever, just, you ever, done, ever done that? You feel very good and feel like you praise God and also the presence of God is there? Mm -hmm. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. You see, obey the Lord. Obey the Lord. But you see, are we going to pay the price? Are we going to pay the price? Listen, faith cometh by hearing Romans 10, 17. And, and, oh, pray, and hearing by the word of God. You need to get in the word of God daily. You need to hear the word of God daily. You, Brother Seville, you mentioned you need to be in the house of God every time the doors are open. Right. To hallelujah. Right. But Sunday school's too early. Uh -oh. It's still not as early as work. Come on now. Oh, praise God. Come on now. Oh. Can I tell you what I told my church? Good get <laughs> Jesus said, You cannot serve God in the man. Isn't that right? Sure. God has been before money. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens when you punch in a minute late at work? When I worked, it cost me 15 minutes. Now, I don't know where what your place is. I don't know. Ooh, I don't want to do that too much because I don't like losing 15 minutes worth of pain. Sure. Where am I going with this? <sighs> you ever heard that song, When the Saints Come Dragging In? <laughs> when the Saints Come Dragging In. 15, 30 minutes late. <laughs> the sun, I don't even come to Sunday school, some of them. But they're faithful to the money. Right. Now I know something. Don't you know it? You know it? You know it? They're more faith. They're serving mammon instead of Jesus. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's put Jesus first. Right. So I don't punch a clock in church. That preacher better not do that. <laughs> that's all right. There's someone up in heaven that's punching the clock. Sure. Right. Amen. Right. You know, here's another verse, oh God help us. You see, see, we're having we have a hard time. We have a hard time, see, even doing these simple things, much less having the power of Smith Wiggles work and the power that says the works that I do. You know what Jesus said? He said, if you're gonna be my disciple, you gotta hate your father, you gotta hate your mother, you gotta hate your wife, you gotta hate your sons and your daughters, you gotta hate them. You know, I love you, Jesus. But my dad, he invited me to go golfing on Sunday morning. Come on, preach. I wish my dad would be saved. Not as long as you're putting him ahead of God. Right. Come on now. Come on now. Come on. Hallelujah. You see, you know what? You're not going to have very much of God and much of the anointing of God unless your faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Mm -hmm. right, right. Hallelujah. Feast on it. Feed on it. Desire the word of God. I must read it. I must desire it. I mean, I want to hear what it says. Amen. I want to even read it sometimes more. Hallelujah. Than just once a year. I, oh, I want to hear the word of God. Yes. 
You see, Brother Seville, I, I witnessed to somebody once this year. God help us. Help us to do all we can. Amen. Help us with our hearts. See, feast on the word. Matthew 7, 8. And I want you to hear this. Because some people, they pray and they stop. <coughs> For everyone that asketh, receiveth. And he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Amen. That word asketh and seeketh and knocketh means on a continual basis. Amen. I'm asking. I'm asking. See, I'm not asking for the biggest house in town. I'm not seeking for the best piece of property in town. I'm not knocking and asking Rockefeller for all this, but I'm asking the King of Kings for his anointing. I'm yeah. asking for the souls of my neighbors. I'm asking for souls. I'm asking God, I want to receive the anointing. I want to receive the gifts of the Spirit. I'm seeking till I find. Hallelujah. You see, Brother Savannah, you're seeking all over the yard until you find. Hallelujah. And you're knocking and you're knocking. Oh, God, I want your power. After I got out of Bible school, I got hungry for the Word of God. I got hungry for the gifts of the Spirit. I began to desire. I, there, there were some old-time books on the gifts of the Spirit. Howard Carter, Donald G., Harold Horton, I devoured those books. I began to hunger, oh, praise God, and the Holy Ghost began to answer my prayer. Mm -hmm. let, me ask, let me ask you something about the gifts of the Spirit. See, the, first of all, the baptism of the Holy Ghost is a command of Jesus. You know you're filled with the Holy Ghost when you spoke with other tongues. Amen. Now, in 1 Corinthians I think it's yeah, chapter 12. It says this. He gives the gifts severally as he will. Last I checked, several is at least three. How many gifts do you have? One now. See, I'm getting ahead of myself. But I'm telling you something. You see, what you know, I think a lot of people, they're like Brother Greg over there, they, don't, they won't even dig because they will not really want me to have it. That's not if you're saved, God wants you to have it. Yes, if you're saved, God wants you to be full of the Holy Ghost. I, you say, well, I don't feel worthy. Let me, let me tell you, as I already mentioned, none of us are worthy. Mm -hmm. None of us are worthy. But he's made us worthy by the blood of Jesus. Right. Mm -hmm. He put the blood on the right ear, the right thumb, the right toe. He put the, the anointing on top of the blood. Hallelujah. On the, on the ear, the tongue, and the toe. You, know, you are completely covered with the blood of the anointing of God. I tell you what, brothers and sisters, ask, seek. Not say, God, use me, God, use me, God, use me, God, fill me, hallelujah. Because you see, there are people, there are people, hallelujah. See, if the Holy Ghost sends me to minister to somebody at night, I said, Brother Angus, I don't want to do that. You're going to miss. And I'll miss. You, you, you know, you and I do that too much. You know what's going to happen? God will take it away and give it to someone else. I'm afraid I'll get lifted up in pride. Just don't humble yourself for God and obey Him. Oh, ask and seek and knock. Listen, I don't believe that. I believe the gifts of the Spirit will keep you humble. Uh -huh. If you love it. Hallelujah. Oh, listen, listen. He said, I'm sending you. Why doesn't God do something? I sent the church. And so often the church, they're like Esau. They sell their birthright for a morsel of meat. Now we're going to eat here, and I'm not against that. But you know what? City churches have church meetings. They have church dinners. They have they have they have uh, uh, ball games. They have all these different things. But they cut off their church services, and then they cut off the altars. And, and, and what they're doing? They're settling for a morsel of meat. They're selling their birthrights. Right. Hallelujah, folks! I'm going to tell you what. You know, <laughs> I, I'm not against having fellowships and times of church. But I tell you what bothers me. If some of the ones that like to come to that don't come to Wednesday night. Amen. <laughs> and they said, we want to have other stuff like that. And I'm thinking, I'm almost wanting to cut the ones I do have off until you start being faithful to church. Mm -hmm. I hope you might be back. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
But you will never be used by God if you're not faithful to God's house and you're not faithful to the altar and to seek the Lord. Amen. Oh, God. You see, now here's something else. Seeking, knocking, asking. Amen. Hearing the word of God. Amen. Gets a little harder. Matthew, Mark 9, 29. And he said unto them, This kind come not forth but by fasting and prayer. Mm-hmm. Right. I don't like the fast. No, I mean we have a, we have a prayer meeting once a month that's going to last five hours. I start dreading it a week ahead. My flesh starts dreading it a week ahead. <laughs> but I always know it's good for you. Sure. Amen. You get to begin to see God, and sometimes two hours, three hours in, when the presence of God begins to come, says, so "I'm glad I was here." Amen. Hallelujah. Praise oh, God. Hallelujah. The, there are no shortcuts to this. It amazes me all the other thing, all the activity people think is happening church, and they think they get their love to cover all these activities, but they don't let, don't get them to come to the where the altar call is given and where the Holy Ghost is moving. Folks, you miss the boat. Mm -hmm. You miss the boat. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! You see now, you're in the Word. You're actually seeking and knocking. Mark 11, 24. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Begin to desire, brother angels. Begin to desire. I want. I, I want to be against if I have all mine gifts the Spirit. I don't hurt to ask. It doesn't hurt. But, and I know he gives us several as he will. But I tell you what, you won't get if you don't ask. Yeah. Right. Ask, right. seek, not desire. I desire. There are people that need something from heaven. And they don't. And I'm, I'm hope, others have it. I'm, this whole church, you see, this is the, the gifts of the Spirit for the body. Hallelujah. Desire, desire, desire. Delight yourself in the Lord. And he'll give you the desires of your heart. Oh God, Lord, it's not when I get to heaven how much money in my bank account, but how many souls mm -hmm. I was able to bring to heaven with. Oh God, oh God, hallelujah. And so that's what he says, but covet earnestly the best gifts. Yeah. Covet, desire. He says, follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts. Amen. He says, but rather that you may prophesy. Oh, praise God. We want to covet, desire. Hallelujah, use me. I try to give you something to look forward to though, when you come to church. I do my brother. I mean, I, I mean, oh, I come to fellowship. I mean, I, I, expect, I said, Lord, I expect God to use me. Sure. If He doesn't, that's fine, brother. Well, you, brother Angel, just said, brother, so I'm from that. Oh my, you grow up there. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> right. Because we want the whole body in you. But you see, let me tell you what, there's room for everybody. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. Amen. Oh, I'm a Amen. Now, listen, Thank you, Jesus. listen to this. You know why you need the Holy Ghost? And it is one because of, but it says there in verse 3, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue and fire for yourself. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in tongue. Build up yourself. You ever come to church with the Holy Ghost? You start praying the Holy Ghost, God lift you up. Amen. When you start praying the Holy Ghost, have God let fight. Hallelujah. Now, but I'll tell you this, if I am not lifted up, I have found this also. If I have ill will towards Brother Andrews, I can forget God using me at all church. You know, so the sooner, the sooner I get everything prayed through. You might not even know about it. Probably best you never got it. If I get it prayed through, come on. Amen. Because you see, your will will quench the spirit inside of you. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, I covet the presence of God more than all night of grudge. Yes, right, I'm right, right. right. <laughs> because you know, I found God. I've seen this through my God knows how to take care of it. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh. Oh, right. But then it says this, but he the prophesy and find the church. Oh, God. You want tongues interpretation? You want to identify, build up God's people. I tell sitting over there tonight, and the Holy Ghost was building me up. Amen. And I'm going to thank you, Lord. I thought, Lord, I don't feel worthy, but I thank you.
thank you, Lord, that you are confirming over and over what I'm going to preach here. Praise God. Romans 8, 26 and 27, the quote is this. Hallelujah. I'm going to the time, folks. Here's what I hope you get. God wants to use you. Mm -hmm. God wants you to win souls. God wants you to bring people to church. Amen. He said, if you need to be prepared, be saved. Would you come? Be saved. He said, well, Brother, say, you know what? I'll come with you. Hallelujah. 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 Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we want, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Hallelujah. Oh God, you might be praying for your brother and sister. Hallelujah. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints. According to the will of God. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The best way to pray for your brother and sister is praying the Holy Ghost. Amen. Because you don't know. Hallelujah. One sister, I think it was Massachusetts years ago. The Holy Ghost woke her up and said, I want you to begin to pray. She began to pray. She saw a vision of a man somewhere. Hallelujah. On a bed. And in her vision, she saw this man dying. Hallelujah. And then they heard it. she began to pray in tongues. She began to pray in tongues. And she began to pray in tongues. And in this vision, she's praying in tongues. This man jumped out of the bed and got up. A man that was dying up there. Six months to a year later, this man walked in their church as a missionary. And she said, I saw you a year ago, six months to a year ago, in a vision. Were you dying? She said, I, was, I almost died. But all of a sudden, I was miraculously healed. Praise God. She said, I was praying in the Holy Ghost for you. Praise God. Yeah. A missionary, he came to church one night. It was a prayer meeting night. You know how it is. There weren't that many there. But there in the back of the church, he said, people praying, seeking God. And one old... I was a farmer, an engineer, he's back there, he's praying in tongues, praying in tongues, praying in tongues. I mean, he prayed for half an hour, hour. As this missionary was listening, this man was praying in tongues of the language of the people he ministered to. He heard that man call out names of the Holy Ghost that a people in that man's church <laughs> call out names. Pray for people, all kinds Praise of God. Hallelujah. He went back and talked to, you know, he didn't know a word that he was saying. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray and seek. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, seek for the Holy Ghost. If you have the Holy Ghost, seek for the gifts of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. I can go on all kinds of stories, but I'm here to tell you something. Why doesn't God do something? He wants to send you. And if you let him, let him send you, you see, we got to ask in a lot of places, where is the church? They're all playing basketball on Wednesday or Tuesday. Night, <laughs> when they should be in the house of God. Mm -hmm. sure. I said, I, if, you, if you want to play, you know, have fun or something on another night. But, but don't make me see. But if you, that's the only thing you come to and you miss, come on. You, you're doing wrong. Mm -hmm. You're doing wrong. Sure. Hallelujah. I'm trying to close this, but Brother Seville, come on. Can I tell you something? I, I know it. I know it. I've been in church all my life. I'm a preacher's kid, too. <laughs> the ones that don't come to prayer meetings, that don't come to church, they only want to come to most, they're the ones that's rocking the boat. Grumbling and complaining when they ought to be in the altar getting a hold of God. Mm hmm. Can you still pray after this? Sure. God loves you today. Amen. God wants to use you today. Yes, He does. Yes, He does. Show me the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel His mighty power and His grace. I can feel the rush of angels' wings 
Is my power and his grace. 